Welcome, I'm Mr. Kimball and this is your Flipped Classroom. Hi, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of physics. So we're going to cover things like measurements, uncertainty, do some unit conversions, scientific notation, significant digits, and dimensional analysis. So the first thing we're going to talk about is measurements in physics. Measurements in physics are based Measurements in physics are based on standard units of time, length, or sometimes distance or change in position, and mass. Quantities, the units, the abbreviations, and the variables. These are all very different things, and you need to be careful about exactly what it is you're looking at. So uh, your quantity, the name of what it is that you're doing, so time, length, Etc. Unit. This is thing that you're measuring time in. So the, the unit that we're talking about, that is the actual thing that you're measuring. It's usually a standard unit, the SI units, um, and there's different variations of that. And there's some prefixes that go along with it. So your kilometer, um, your gram, your milligram, those types of things. Those are all units. The abbreviation is actually what I just gave you. So, you know, a second, you know, things that you might not understand is, you know, a newton is a unit of measurement for force. It's, it's abbreviation is N. So those are the abbreviations. And the reason I bring those up is because your abbreviation is not the variable. The variable is how it looks in an equation. So um, this is T for time or length for L. Uh, and so the variables are what you find in an equation. The uh, units are how you are going to measure that thing. Um, and so you kind of got, you know, what it is that you're, you're measuring. Okay, so I'm going to measure length. Um, the unit is going to be based on the instrument that you're using, so maybe a meter or a millimeter, kind of depend on the tool you have. And then the variable is how we will abbreviate the, the quantity in the formula. So they're all a little bit different, okay? Uh, this chart here kind of displays some um, quantities and units, and, and this, this next chart will display uh, all the different types of uh, units that are out there. It'll, we'll we'll come across a whole bunch of them. We'll, we'll kind of cover them as as they come up. Unit conversions. Unit conversions help. Uh, unit conversions help us change from one type of unit to another type of unit. Okay. Um, we use what's called an equality. Everybody knows that one minute is equal to 60 seconds, okay? That is an equality. And you'll notice that I have a unit of time and a different unit of time, okay? And so we can use these equalities by setting this thing equal to one and then plugging one anywhere that we need to change units from one to the other, okay? And so what we do, so if I divide both sides by 60, I have an equality that one minute is equal to 60 seconds, right? And I could have done it the other way, and that's still equal to one. And so what we see with these equalities is that I can stack this thing, and then I can use it in either way, okay? It doesn't do me a whole lot of good in this form right here, so what we'll do is we'll convert it into this so that this whole thing is equal to one and then depending on how I want to use it, which units I want to change it to, I'll, I'll plug those in. So let's say I want to know how many minutes are in 400 seconds. So I collected some data, I have this big number, 400 seconds, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I want to put it in terms of minutes so I can understand it better. 
And so I'm dealing with seconds and minutes, and so I have to choose my inequality. Uh, and so I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, okay? And I don't know which way I want to do that, and so I'll go over here and I say, what am I in and where am I going? So I'm going to say, I am at 400 seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by something to get it into minutes. And so if I want seconds to cancel out, I'm going to want these seconds over here in this, inequal or this equality, I want that to be on the bottom so that they cancel out because you know that secretly this guy is over one, right? And so I want to put seconds on the bottom and minutes on the top. And so I know that there's one minute in 60 seconds. My seconds will cancel and my unit that I'll have left is minutes, which is what I want. Now I do the math. 400 times 1 over 60, the same as 400 divided by 60, and it, that if you did that math, you would come up with 6.67 minutes. And to me, that makes more sense than 400 seconds. I can relate to this, and that might be why I want to do that. We got to do a few things. My time increment has changed, and my uh, distance or my length has changed. And so I'm going to do several parts. So I start out with what I have, 47 meters. I'm going to write this a little bit differently in one second. That'll help me see the tops and the bottoms, and we'll do train tracks this time. And then the only thing you have to do now is you're going to multiply across the top. So you're going to multiply across the bottom, and then you'll divide those two numbers, 105 miles per hour. We, in physics, deal with really large numbers and really small numbers, okay? Um, so the way we deal with this is scientific notation. So scientific notation, or sci note, is when you write the number with a single integer between 1 and 10 with a decimal and a times 10 to some power n. Okay. So let's do an example. Dealing with a really large number, uh, the distance between planetary objects, okay? Um, the Earth and the Sun have a distance between them of one astronomical unit. And it's called one AU. You'll see that every now and then. Uh, it's a standard unit for astronomy. That's equal to about 150 million kilometers, okay? And that's a really big number, and if you were dealing with a whole bunch of um, astrophysics and math out there with large numbers, you're not going to want to carry around all of these zeros. It's going to be a pain in the butt. And so what I want to do is change this into scientific notation. Okay? I want to change it so that this number is between 1 and 10. And so the best way to do that is you're going to go 1.5. I'm going to take all those numbers and I'm going to make it equal to 1.5. And then what do you do with these zeros? Okay? Well, what you're really doing with this is you're multiplying it by a power of 10. Um, in layman's and middle school, what we typically say is we just count, count where the decimal is. You know that there's a decimal over here, and I'm going to move it to the left. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times that way. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this 15 million by, or I'm sorry, I should say dividing it by, um, a power of 10 to the 8. So these are the same number. This one's written in scientific notation. And in order to go from this to the scientific notation, I divided it by a power of 10 to the 8. So if you see something in scientific notation, what that means is that you are multiplying it by a power of 8. And so uh, roughly speaking, if it's a positive integer, positive exponent, you're going to move the decimal to the right. 
that number of times. And so I bounce it. One, two, three, and you can undo that, right? If it's a negative exponent, you're gonna go to the opposite side. And what that's saying is, um, to unpack this, is you're gonna divide it by that power because um, 10 to the positive eight is all up here in the numerator, but if I change it to um, times 10 to the negative eight, what that really means is that that power is in the denominator. And so I would divide 1.5 by 10 to the power of eight, and that would unpack this, this number. Okay, it would I, move the decimal this way, right, and make, make it a really, really small number, okay? So if the, the exponent's a negative, you're gonna move that decimal to the left, which basically you're dividing it, or if it's a positive number, like in this example, you're gonna move the decimal to the right, which means you're multiplying it, you're making it a bigger number, okay? So scientific notation is used to deal with really large, really small numbers. Um, and there are some of them that are really common. So let's do a set, another example about some common ones. Okay, um, some of the really, really common ones, uh, we have a prefix chart. Let's, let's take uh, like a, a power generator, okay, a power station. Of energy per hour, right? That's a ton of energy. But again, it's so much energy that I don't, I don't wanna deal with all of these zeros. So how do I take care of that? Well, let's put that into scientific notation. And, and that's fine, you're done, okay? If you were using watts uh, and you wanted to use scientific notation, that's perfectly fine. But I know, if I look at this prefix chart, that one times 10 to the nine is a giga, okay? So you, we could call this a giga watt and so what i do is i substitute that for the g and i can just say it's one gigawatt so these are all equal 